Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture six. In this lecture, we are going to cover the trend following strategy. So let's get started. First, let's look at the road returns. So we are still working with the returns, but in this case, we want to add a transformation, which is to take the logarithm of the returns so that it facilitates a calculation. And uh, we'll see the reason shortly. So suppose here I have a stock symbol, which is uh, Google, and I'm using Y Finance to download the stock prices uh, in this range. So this is the first week of uh, 023. And uh, we see the, the results here. So the data starts at the 3rd of January, which uh, me, which means that not every day is a trading day. And the the first trading day in the 2023 starts at the 3rd of January, right? And column wise, we have the open price, high, low, closing price, adjust close and the volume. So this is the data we're going to work with. Now to calculate the terminal return, uh, since we know the prices already, suppose we are taking the closing price, right? And we know the starting price. This is the uh, the stock price when we enter into a position, for example, if we buy one stock. And this is the price that actually uh, closes at the end of the investment period. So this, of, of course, we uh, lose some... Uh, value of the of the stock because the the value drops in price right and how do we calculate the return the return is really taking the the uh asset price at the end of the investment period which is you know divided as minus one right last closing price divided by the first closing price and minus one so as we mentioned earlier this gives me the one plus r uh, formatted return or the term uh, or the terminal return in the one plus r format and then we're going to minus one to make it uh, a simple return right so this is uh, how we would calculate the terminal return using the two price points two price points uh, the terminal points and the signing points and we have a second way to, to do this so the second way is really to um, go through the sequential compounding process, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, in this case, we can take the we can take the uh, closing volume and apply the function percentage change. So this gives us the single period uh, returns in percentages. So here we have the percentage, and we know that the first period is empty because uh, there's no uh, there's no previous price we can use to calculate. So this is the single period. And again, we need to go through the sequential compounding process. So the compounding works by first converting the returns to the one plus R format, right? This uh, represents our uh, money on hand and uh, in terms of returns. And we're going to use the uh, QMPROT function, which is to calculate the cumulative product of all historical returns, including the current return, right? And then uh, this gives me the cumulative return for every period. And then we're going to minus one because uh, just to convert it back to the the simple return format, because we're still working with the one plus our return. Right? So if you compare the uh, price at the last point, this is going to be the same as the price point here. So we managed to calculate the same terminal return using two different approaches. Now, if we look at the third approach, which is uh, where we introduce the log returns. So here, I'm going to still take the one plus R format return <clears throat> and then uh, apply the logarithmic transformation. So this gives me the prices here. And again, the first period is ended because there's no price point there. Um, so this is simply to take the uh, logarithmic transformation of the original one plus r returns. And then we can 
uh, we can uh, apply the the QM sum uh, function. So this is really the difference. Originally, we have the QM products, right? Cumulative products. And now we have the cumulative uh, summation. And the reason is really this. So suppose uh, I want to calculate A times B. Right, and now I'm uh, applying the logarithmic transformation. So it's going to be log A plus log B, which gives me uh, log A and B, right? Based on the properties of uh, logarithmic function. And because of these, uh, now I can say the original A times B is equal to the exponential of logarithm of a and B. So that's uh, what we are doing here. All right, so if you see, um, we're going to first uh, calculate calculate the uh, summation. So this is summation here. So this gives me the cumulative return in the uh, uh, logarithmic return uh, sense. And then we're converting it back to the, uh, the original scale by applying the exponential operation. And then finally minus one because original the the logarithm the logarithms are still in the one plus r format, right? So this goes through uh, several steps of transformations, but eventually we're calculating the same thing, which is here, right? So we can verify the equality by uh, comparing the logarithm returns with the original return. Again, also the the previous cumulative return with the uh, was the terminal return calculated using the two price points. And again, they are all equal. Right. So um, so this is a uh, mix for the difference. And uh, it is here because usually it is much easier to calculate uh, addition, right? so this addition, instead of multiplication, because addition makes the mathematical analysis easier. And then uh, we just need to convert it to logarith logarithmic format and then come it back to the exponential if we need it. All right. So now let's look at uh, uh, the trend uh, trend tree. So trend based tree. So this is a type of strategy that captures uh, the gains uh, or, or losses right in in the other direction, and it's using the the moment of the uh, the asset price. So Really, uh, we can think of this as a vector. So, uh, moment as a vector. So, vector has two two attributes. One is the direction. So, momentum has a direction going up or going down. And then it also has a magnitude, right? How strong the momentum is. Uh, so that's uh, really uh, two attributes here. So, uh. So in the trend, uh, uh, so the trend here refers to the asset price that is moving uh, in one direction and then going up or down, right? Going up or down. And then the, the momentum again here means the capacity or the uh, the strength uh, of the assets movements uh, to 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 sustain itself uh, going forward. How 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 strong the momentum is. So we can develop the trend following strategy that makes uses of this momentum. And then uh, uh, essentially it is our uh, trends uh, look, uh, looking forward, right? forward looking trends, and then it's going up or down. And we expect the uptrends to continue with the new highs and uh, the, the downtrends to, to continue with the new lows. This is really the, this sort of assumption based on the trend following strategy. So if we follow a trend, then we expect the trend to continue. And it's going to continue with new highs or new lows. Um, so the, we are going to use a, a set of technical, so-called technical indicators to help us generate the trading signals based on the momentum. And, uh, and here the technical indicators are essentially uh, some sort of mathematical calculations based on the historical data. Could be the high, low, open, close, or volume, and then we're going to use them to generate the trading signals, which are essentially entry and exit points for the traders. 
so you can either go long or go short. And uh, these technical indicators are typically can be considered as uh, uh, features that we manually engineered or manually created, and they are highly security dependent. So the features that works in one asset works for one asset does not necessarily work for the other assets. Um, in general, we can use this sort of derived features called technical indicators to confirm if the market is following your trends or in a range bound situation, which means uh, it's oscillating within a price range, right? Not really uh, exceeding the 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 range uh, up the uh, upper bounds and lower bounds, right? And we are looking for the trend that actually uh, has a momentum to exceed the the, the bounds. Okay, so that's it for this lecture, and uh, we'll cover more of us. Uh, uh, technical indicators and the journey strategy itself in the next video. Thank you.